Today we're breaking down this funny scene from The Office where Jim impersonates Dwight. We'll start by watching the clip with subtitles, then we'll break down each section to learn key vocabulary and expressions, and finally we'll watch the clip again without subtitles. By then, you'll see how much you've learned with this video. Así está mejor. Pregunta. ¿Qué tipo de oso es mejor? Es una pregunta ridícula. Falso. El oso negro. Eso es debatible. Hay dos escuelas de pensamiento. Hecho. Los osos comen betabeles. ¿Ah? Osos. Betabeles. Battlestar Galáctica. Los osos no. ¿Qué está sucediendo? ¿Qué estás haciendo? Hace unas semanas fui a una farmacia y vi estos anteojos. Uh, cuatro dólares. Y solo me costó siete dólares recrear el resto del disfraz y eso hace un total de... once dólares. La más sincera forma de halago es la imitación. Te lo agradezco. Robar una identidad no es una broma, Jim. Millones de familias sufren cada año. ¡Michael! ¡Ah, qué gracioso! ¡Michael! Se ve borroso. Se ve borroso. Borroso is an adjective that comes from the verb borrar, to erase. When something is or look borroso, you can think of it as if it was halfway erased. You can see it, but not so clear. For example, if you move your camera when taking a picture and end up with an unclear image, you would say, la foto quedó borrosa. Así está mejor. Así está mejor. Así is one of those tricky words with multiple meanings. It can be translated as like this, like that, this way, that way. So how can we know what it means in this context? Well, this entire video is on Fluent U, so if we click on this word, we can see that in this context, así means that, as in that's better, or that way is better. And if we use the Fluent U video dictionary, we can take some video examples. No. Así está bien. Los cócteles, así todo lo que tenga como azúcar. Pregunta. ¿Qué tipo de oso es mejor? Es una pregunta ridícula. Falso. El oso negro. Eso es debatible. Hay dos escuelas de pensamiento. Hecho. Los osos comen betabeles. Ah. Pregunta. ¿Qué tipo de oso es mejor? Es una pregunta ridícula. Falso. El oso negro. Eso es debatible. Hay dos escuelas de pensamiento. Hecho. Los osos comen betabeles. Betabeles is the plural form of betabel. This is the word used for bits in Mexico, where most American TV shows are dubbed into Spanish. In a few other locations, like Chile and Peru, they also use the word betarraga. But in almost every other Spanish-speaking country, it's actually more common to refer to this vegetable as remolacha. Osos. Betabeles. Battlestar Galactica. Los osos no. ¿Qué está sucediendo? ¿Qué estás haciendo? Osos. Betabeles. Battlestar Galactica. Los osos no. ¿Qué está sucediendo? ¿Qué estás haciendo? Sucediendo is the gerund form of the verb suceder, to happen. And haciendo is the gerund of hacer, to do or to make. This type of conjugation is the equivalent to the English present continuous. To formulate it, you need to have the correct conjugation of the verb estar plus a verb in its gerund form. Verbs ending in er as suceder, to happen, or in ir as vivir, to live, will swap their final two letters for the ending yendo, estoy viviendo con mi madre. Verbs ending in ar, on the other hand, as manejar, to drive, will swap their final two letters for the ending ando, él está manejando. That's the rule for regular verbs. However, there are some irregular ones which involve other slight changes, but we won't cover those today. Hace unas semanas fui a una farmacia y vi estos anteojos. Uh, cuatro dólares. Hace unas semanas fui a una farmacia y vi estos anteojos. Ah, cuatro dólares. Anteojos is one of the multiple words used in Spanish to call prescription glasses. It depends on the location, but in most places they actually call them gafas or lentes. That's why when looking for glasses on FluentU, we can see these two results. If you wanted to refer to sunglasses, you would call them gafas de sol or lentes de sol. 
like they do in this video. Estas gafas de sol son elegantes. Esas gafas de sol son modernas. Y solo me costó 7 dólares recrear el resto del disfraz. Y, y solo me costó 7 dólares recrear el resto del disfraz. Recrear looks like recreation, but be careful because the meaning is quite different. If we click on this word in Fluent U, it tells us that recrear actually means to recreate in the sense of creating again or imitating something. De nuevo, la compañía Weta nos demuestra su capacidad para recrear civilizaciones completas en la pantalla. El uso de conceptos de física y matemática para recrear el agujero negro y el agujero de gusano. Jim is talking about recreating the disfraz, the costume he's using to look like right. Disfraz from the verb disfrazar, which refers to the action of changing the look of someone or something to look like someone or something else. This word is very different from English, but likely, if we click on this word in Fluent U, we can watch lots of examples of this frase used in real world videos. Un disfraz de ninja verde. ¿Verde? ¿Crees que yo podría ser un ninja con este disfraz? Jessica Jones, porque es una heroína mujer y no lleva disfraz. In Fluent U, you can watch this whole scene from The Office, as well as other authentic videos for an immersive language learning experience. All clips in Fluent U come with interactive subtitles that give you pronunciation tips and example sentences. Plus, after watching, you can take a personalized quiz so you completely learn every word. Click the link in the description and get a free trial for two weeks. Sí, eso hace un total de... 11 dólares. Y eso hace un total de... 11 dólares. Hace un total de... means literally makes a total of. This expression is commonly used after a calculation to indicate the result you got. You'd say hace or hacen un total de plus your final number. For example, una banana de 100 calorías y un jugo de 50 calorías hacen un total de 150 calorías. La más sincera forma de halago es la imitación. La más sincera forma de halago es la imitación. The word más before an adjective means most. In this case, the adjective is sincera, sincere. So más sincera means most sincere or sincerest. And this is describing a forma, which means a form or a way. Unlike in most cases in Spanish, here we have the adjective sincera before the noun, forma. This special order is meant to give more value or importance to the noun, but you don't really use it much in conversational Spanish. It sounds too formal in most situations and even poetic, just the kind of awkward language that Dwight likes to use. So he was referring to the forma of halago. An halago is a compliment or flattery and it comes from the verb halagar, which basically means to praise or to show affection. Te lo agradezco. Te lo agradezco. Te lo agradezco is probably the most elaborate way of saying thanks in Spanish. It literally translates into I thank it to you, but a more natural equivalent would be I appreciate it or I'm grateful to you. Keep in mind te is an informal pronoun, so if you want to thank someone like this but in a formal situation, you would say se lo agradezco. Robar una identidad no es una broma, Jim. Millones de familias sufren cada año. Robar una identidad no es una broma, Jim. Millones de familias sufren cada año. The most common way to translate cada is to the word each, but depending on the context, and especially when talking about frequency, it also means every. So you could use it to say Cada paso cuenta. Cada uno de ustedes es único. ¡Ah, qué gracioso! ¡Michael! ¡Ah, qué gracioso! ¡Michael! Finally, we got que. Another Spanish word with multiple meanings. ¿Qué is most commonly translated into what? For example, ¿Qué niño tierno? But when used before an adjective that is not preceded by a noun, it actually means how. So if we remove the noun kid from the previous example, we'd come up with ¿Qué tierno? Se ve borroso. Así está mejor. Pregunta. ¿Qué tipo de oso es mejor? Es una pregunta ridícula. Falso. El oso negro. Eso es debatible. 
Hay dos escuelas de pensamiento. Hecho. Los osos comen betabeles. ¿Ah? Osos. Betabeles. Battlestar Galáctica. Los osos no. ¿Qué está sucediendo? ¿Qué estás haciendo? Hace unas semanas fui a una farmacia y vi estos anteojos. Uh, cuatro dólares. Y solo me costó siete dólares recrear el resto del disfraz. Y eso hace un total de... 11 dólares. La más sincera forma de halago es la imitación. Te lo agradezco. Robar una identidad no es una broma, Jim. Millones de familias sufren cada año. ¡Michael! ¡Ah, qué gracioso! ¡Michael! Si you're enjoying learning Spanish with TV shows, in this next video, my friend Federico breaks down a very funny scene from The Big Bang Theory. Over there, you will learn some useful terms to keep improving your conversational Spanish. Don't miss it out.